You'll no doubt remember when we were doing electric fields, going through a few derivations of the equations for the amount of field due to different shaped charges. We worked through some integrals to get there and you might have got a bit lost. Well, now we're going to do it all again for magnetic fields. The methods are exactly the same and you may even find that the integrals are starting to look a bit familiar. We'll start with the law worked out by two French scientists, Jean-Baptiste Biot and Félix Savard. So the law that they came up with lets us calculate the magnetic field due to a wire of arbitrary shape carrying a current I. Now as usual we divide up the wire into tiny sections of length ds. Then the tiny element of magnetic field db at a point P due to the current in that tiny segment of wire is given by the top equation. Now you notice that includes the cross product between two vectors. So we can put that into the slightly simpler form below. So now the magnitude of the field is db which equals mu naught over 4 pi times the current i times the length of that little segment ds over r squared times sine theta where theta is the angle between the direction of the current at that point and the vector pointing from that element of wire to the point p. So that's the magnitude and of course direction we find by our usual right hand rules. Now this introduces a new constant. You remember the electrical permittivity of free space that was E0, but now we have the magnetic permeability of free space and that is mu naught. So whenever we have the equations for magnetic field you're going to see that constant mu naught showing up and we always assume that these things are in air. If ever you were looking at magnetic field anywhere else you would have to look up the magnetic permeability of whatever material you're looking at. So once we have that little element of field db of course as usual we then integrate to get the total amount of field at that point due to the whole length of the wire. So to start with we want to find the magnetic field at a point C that is the center of a circular arc of wire with radius R. So we'll work through this on the tablet but why are we starting with an arc? Well, it's a bit of a cheat. It's simpler because all of the points on the arc are the same distance away from C and the direction of the current at every point on that arc is perpendicular to the vector pointing from that element to C and so our sine theta term just becomes 1. So you can see that the amount of arc we have is given by that angle phi. And we give phi in radians and so we know that if phi was 2 pi that would be a full circle. But we just start for the moment with just a segment and so phi will be the angle that that segment subtends. So we have a circular arc of wire and we want the magnetic field at the point C and we've got a current I flowing through it and we're looking at a tiny segment of it ds and that is a vector direction of R towards the center. Now the amount of the arc is given by this angle phi and we also know that the radius of that arc is capital R. So Bio Savar tells us that the little bit of field due to that little bit of the wire is mu naught over 4 pi i times ds crossed with r over r squared. And that is just that bit here is i times ds times sine theta 
over r squared. And sine theta, since the two ds and r are right angles, so ds is there in, at the tangent, sine theta equals 1. So now we have db is mu naught over 4 pi i times ds over capital R squared, since the distance from each point to the circle, the centre of the circle is the same, and that is capital R. So we integrate to get B, which is the integral of dB for the whole arc. So that is the arc from 0 to phi of dB, which is mu naught over 4 pi i times ds over r squared. But we want our integral in terms of the angle phi. So ds, which is the length of that little tiny bit of arc, will be the radius times d phi, which is the angle of that tiny little bit of arc in radians. So what we now have is that b is from naught to phi, mu naught over 4 pi, i times r d phi over r squared, so one of the r's cancel, and we just have i d phi over r. Now let's just bring all the constants out the front. Mu naught's a constant, 4 pi is a constant, current we're counting as a constant, and r is a constant, so it's not leaving much, the integral from naught to phi of d phi. And that is simply equal to phi. So we have mu naught over 4 pi i times the angle in radians over r. So that is for an arc, which is defined by the angle phi. So for a full circle, the angle is 2 pi radians equals 360 degrees. So there we will have the magnetic field for a complete ring. We put 2 pi into here and we end up with mu naught. The 2 pi cancels with 2 pi down there and we're just left with 2 times the current I over the radius R. So that is the magnitude of it, and the direction of it we get from the right-hand rule, which in this case, since that center is to the left of that arc of wire, we can see that the direction is upwards.